and I'm the garden programmer for the Faulkner County Library. Today we're going to be making some spinach pasta. A lot of times if you're growing spinach in the garden, um, a lot of younger kids or just picky eaters in general don't like spinach. We're going to find a way to make spaghetti and incorporate it into the spaghetti or just pasta so that you can get your spinach or vegetables in with a favorite food. All right, so we're going to start by heating up our skillet. We don't have anything in this. It is just a hot skillet. And we're going to take a handful of spinach, add it to our skillet, and just a pinch of salt. And we're just going to sprinkle this. The salt will help draw out the water in the spinach. So we have this nice, almost like a spinach cream once we puree it. And you can hear it sizzling right now. And that's the water coming out from the leaves. Now this will only take about two to three minutes, but you want to keep moving it a little bit. And once it starts to cook down, it happens really quickly. Because the more liquid you have in here, the more the faster it'll cook. You can see the bottom of the bottom of these is starting to get whoop, Almost like the spinach you would see in how pasta or on pizza. And almost done, we want to get all of these leafy greens into a nice dark color. And don't be afraid when you first start this and you put a bunch of that spinach in, it kind of looks like it's going to overflow, but it really cooks down to just a little bit. All right, now that we've got it a nice dark color, we're going to turn off the heat. And we're going to puree it with a immersion blender. All right, so now that we've got our spinach that we've cooked down, we're going to take our immersion blender and we're going to blend it into a uh, almost a cream, but a puree. We'll turn on our immersion blender and we'll. So now that we've got our cooked spinach that we've cooked down, we're going to add our two eggs to the mixture making sure we don't have any eggshells in there. And then we're going to take our emulsion blender and blend them. I think that's about as thin as I'm going to get it. I'm going to unplug my immersion blender and I'll disassemble it so I don't get egg and spinach all over the place. Now that I have my liquids, I'm going to make a little volcano with two cups of flour. I've got my little mat at the top. I'm going to make a little volcano and I'm going to pour all of my liquid into here, or most of it, until I just slowly mix it in. And this is essentially just to minimize the mess. If you attack this with your hands right now, you're going to have um, basically what looks like cake, green cake batter on your hands. And you're going to want to wait until this gets very thick before handling it. Almost to that consistency where I can, it kind of looks like, like guacamole right now test the integrity of the liquid. We're going to end up using most of this, this flour. I'm going to wipe up most of this so we have a lightly floured surface. I'm kind of just going to fold it into itself. And each time we get a lot of green where it starts to get sticky, I'm just going to pat it with a little bit of flour and then fold it. And then you're going to want to knead this for a couple minutes so that all of the dough and the flour and the spinach and the egg are all mixed together. And what you'll end up getting is this really pretty, almost matcha-like color with just a couple hints of darker green where that spinach was not completely pulverized. Once you're at the point where your dough is almost like a Play-Doh. You're going to want to take it, cut it in half, set one portion aside, and then work this dough out onto a flat surface with a rolling pin. And you're going to want to make sure your surface stays floured underneath, otherwise it's going to start to stick. And the consistency or the thickness that you want out of this is going to be very, very thin. Very, very thin. 
thick pasta is going to take a little bit longer to cook. Thin pasta should take about three to four minutes to cook. When I made this last time, mine took about six minutes because I did not roll mine flat enough. And if you notice that it starts to shrink a little bit and puff back up, let it rest about one to two minutes and then go back to flat in it. All right, you want to make a nice long rectangle or as much as a rectangle as you can get. And then we'll take our knife. In this case, I'm going to use a pizza cutter to make my, my noodles. This takes a little bit longer. There are some recipes that will have you fold it kind of like back and forth, back and forth. Back and forth, and then you'll shear it off on the edge, and you only have to cut about two inches, and you'll unfold it, getting the spaghetti strand. That's a little bit quicker, but I tend to find that when I'm cooking them, I tend to get a uneven. Get one area is a little bit thinner, one area is a little thicker, so I prefer to cut mine. A little bit slower. Now while you're doing this you're going to want to start boiling some water with a lot of a uh, little bit of salt. It'll help that water boil a little bit quicker because when we're, you're done with these you're going to boil them in that salted water. All right that ends up being noodles like this. All right now that we have our pot of water at a rolling boil, we are, and it's a little bit salted, we're going to take one of our servings of pasta and just set it right in there. In fact, I think I'm going to do two. You need to mix it up just a little bit. Now this is going to cook faster than if you did a uh, dried pasta. Um, it's not going to take about 10 to 11 minutes. This is going to take about four to six minutes. Depending on the thickness of my noodles, which ended up coming out a little bit thicker than I thought, um, most likely this will take about six minutes to cook. So this pasta, when you cut your pasta, you'll want to make it thinner than what you think it's going to be um, because as the pasta cooks, it will expand. So our pasta ended up taking about six minutes to cook. And we've got this, these nice, thick pasta noodles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fish them out with my tongs and add them to our bowl. Be careful not to splash myself with boiling water. Now, if you're going to make a, a homemade sauce, what you'll want to do is save a little bit of this pasta water. It will help the sauce thicken and cling to the pasta. Um, our mirror gets a little foggy with this steam. All right, so this is what the final cooked version of our spinach pasta looks like. You can see that this, were, this was the leftovers that we have not cooked. If you want to save your leftovers and not immediately cook them, what you can do is put these on a parchment paper on a plate and then pop them in the freezer until you're ready to cook them. This bowl was about two servings. You can cook spinach in your garden. Um, you can also, instead of incorporating spinach, you can th do things like arugula, you can do things like beets. Um, and beets give it that nice, bright purple color. Thank you guys for watching our video. Um, for any more videos on this, be sure to like and subscribe our YouTube channel. We'll also be putting out more videos on our YouTube channel and on the Faulkner County Urban Farm Project page. And if you're looking for more ideas on crafts or events, check out our Facebook page or our website at fcl.org.